never mind your liver, get your Gino spot. Gino spot. Get your Gino spot. Gino spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle, and exercise your middle, have a Gino shot. Spot. I see we've got some people on already. That's fantastic. Carol Jacobs, you didn't even make it first this time. It is Happy Raz, you're the first one to make it online. Look at you. We got your number. And Jack, Jack, A, Jack, a Sam. I don't know if you were, it can't be the same as first. Somebody's got to be first and you've got to be second. So you are second. Yes, happy, uh, happy Rads, uh, as was, he made it, he made it in, he's obviously been waiting, waiting, Happy Rads, I don't know what Happy Rads is, sounds nice, sounds nice, I hope you've all got a drink, ladies and gentlemen, you've got something to sip on, because we've got to have a lovely conversation with Andre Erasmus, and we're going to talk about a couple of old times, new times, what he's been doing overseas, what's happening in England, why he took all the petrol, why he's, he's depleted all the Tesco's. We'll see what's happening there. We'll check what's uh, what uh, catch up on what's uh, on all the news, indeed, because the news is what his life was all about. We can uh, we, we can if it's a team event. <laughs> you mean you had a tag a tag team? <laughs> no, no, it can only be one first person. That's that. And Carol Jacobs is normally that one, but she was a little bit slow. I think third. Nick Erasmus was third. Well done, indeed. <laughs> I don't really know this is a competition for the uh, first one to comment, but fantastic. I'm glad you all are. And tell me what you're drinking. Tell me where you're watching from because I want to know where you guys are in the world. Uh, I know there's going to be lots of people from all over the place tonight because, uh, because of course, uh, Andre is over in the United Kingdom, which is quite interesting. Excellent indeed. And uh, uh, <laughs> being on two, uh, two minutes before, <laughs> Carol says. Uh, third, Michael, no, no, you're at least sixth or eighth here. I tell you, even Lenny Rasmus made it before you. I can see that. All right, we're well, kidding. This is not a competition, guys. <laughs> You're getting me distracted. I'm ADD as it is. <laughs> All right, so we are here on a Thursday night, and we are actually doing the Saturday show on Thursday. Because why? Because we have a gig. Because Cyril opens our stuff up for the election. So we're going to ride on that wave. That's right. Thank you very much. And thank you to our sponsors, Fitch and Leeds, as you can see, and Spa. Spa! Indeed, Spa are having their race this weekend. Don't, don't forget to have a look at the Grand Prix this weekend at, uh, at UPE. As, uh, well, there's NMMU. NMMU, uh, NMU is going to be uh, hosting the uh, the Grand Prix, the 10K. Those ladies are quick. They are super quick. You won't believe the pace that they run. Yo man. So um, I'm looking forward to checking that out. But we are going to be in Joburg for a gig. So, uh, so on Saturday, it will be a rebroadcast of tonight. So welcome to the Saturday people. We love you very much. And uh, thank you to Amovia for our internet as well. And of course, thank you to Fitch and Leeds. Thank you to Spot. Tell me where you're watching from. Tell me what you're drinking. And I hope you're drinking a lot of it. Because the more you drink, the more fun we're going to have. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Gino Spot, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about the press tonight. Rest in the blues People love it when you 
Cause it takes two different Shark K is in the water Ilio Minster I like that cause I'm a Leo Alright when it's on sun Hello, hello, hello Is there anybody out there? What you doing? Away, away. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Gino's Spot Indeed. <laughs> Fantastic, a little bit of Don Henley stuff there. I love that song, I love that song. In about 1982, I think, or 80, I think it was 82 or 83. Best time for music that time, eh? Best time for music, 80, from 1980 through to 84. I'm telling you that those songs are all still, all still played today. Fantastic. All right, so um, the ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is uh, now we're going to do our, our sponsors, Fitch and Leeds. We're going to have a look at, they've got a new story on the go. Let's have a look and see what they've got to say. Maurice Merlington's mind swirled with ideas. So, what's the story, Morris? But it was never the right time to share his work. The demand was only a distraction. Darling, just share. Dad, now the story. With innovation as his only destination, he set off for new discoveries, a land of uncharted stories. idea was worth sharing until he had redefined perfection. <laughs> but the perfect discovery had left him behind. Hey, you look like you've been on a journey. So what's your story? For exceptional ideas are meant to be shared. Nice. I see they've got the little one. I think it's the one liter bottles that they got here. You see the one liter. We've got the little bit of sugar-free grapefruit, which is quite nice. It's sugar-free, so it doesn't give you a heart attack eventually, you know, and after all these years of sugar. So, we, you know, if you want to cut down your sugar, it's a good one, and it makes your, t makes your, your a tongue and your taste buds go. That's right, baby. All right, so thank you very, very much for joining us uh, on Gino's Spot tonight. And we have our special guest indeed, Mr. Andre Erasmus, all the way from over the seas. <laughs> Hello, Andre. Hi. How are you doing? Welcome. It, it's lovely to see your cheery face again, you know. <laughs> it was such a part of the PE fiber for so many years, and, uh, and we've missed you. Yeah, I wonder what's in that glass you've got, because you haven't spoken a word of sense so far. <laughs> it's not my job to speak sense, you know. It's you true, and yeah. newspaper guys have to. <laughs> we used to, yeah. Indeed, indeed. Andre, yeah. well, fantastic yeah. to have you on uh, on the show. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, t just tell everybody where you are at the moment and, and what you what you busy with. Okay. Um, I live in a place called Beckenham, which is southeast of London. It has a fuel shortage like most of the southeast. It's famous for David Bowie, uh, Enid Blyton, ah. the Rolling Stones for a short time. Enid Blyton? Yeah, remember her? Yeah. She <laughs> lived here, apparently. Yes. Oh, okay. And, and, and Jagger and Keith Richards lived somewhere in Beckenham for a short time, and Bowie was here for longer. Oh, that's funny. Uh, did you have an interview with, with Jagger? Um, I spoke to him on the internet, yeah, when he was... Oh, really? Uh, Trying to help me cover cricket when South Africa were playing the West Indies. That was that was way back <laughs> when Don Henley was writing songs. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you liked that one. Yes, yeah, nice. Andre, <laughs> and Gino, he, Sean Coase says I never speak sense. Uh, that's that's uh, Sean Coase, of course, from Pop Shop days. Yeah, yeah oh, Pop Shop. You, yes, you you and your skateboard when you went and did the banking. <laughs> Rollerblades. I had rollerblades. Okay. Yes, yes. It was it, it was um at, at at literally twenty-five past three I'd get the cash, you know, and I'd shoot out with those blades. Yeah. And I mean sometimes I had a lot of cash in that bag, but nobody catch me nobody catch me with that. Yep. And these days you can go into a bank with a mask on and nobody says a word. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everybody's got masks yeah. these days. It's like the guys that are unmasked that are the, you got to watch out for. <laughs> What's it? Uh, Bronwyn Leeshing says, how's it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Bron. Who, who's Bron? Who's Bron? Tell me, you better tell us who these people are commenting here as well. Bronwyn Leeshing. Um, she's 
Mark Lushing's wife. They live in Texas in the oh, yes. states. Yes, um, I know. Okay, I know. I know. Yeah. I know Mark Lushing, of course. Jessica and and Adi. Yeah, and and Mark. That's they, right. They, uh, uh, Adi Adi sang for uh, sang for um, Benjamin, Benjamin Gate. Gate. Yep. Benjamin Gate, and then she was in the movie. The the we watched the movie as well. Uh, I can't remember the movies, but Jeremy Camp's life. Yeah, um, she's right. married to Jeremy Camp. Yeah. Amazing, and, and uh, it was a lovely story. It was very nice, and it, it felt quite nice and warm because I felt like I was part of that, part of something there. <laughs> yeah. uh, man, and, and so I mean, how many years have you been you've been over there now, Andre? I'm 21. We left South Africa on the 31st of December 2000. Holy crap! Now yeah. I feel old. I really Thank do you, feel I'm old old. now. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, 21 yeah, so years. 21 years. Yeah. As a millennium, so it was the millennium that made you decide, okay, we've got to do this now. Yeah, <laughs> probably it was a whole bunch of things. I think the Evening Post closing was one of the things, and there was yes. lots of other stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did, did it close in 2001? Uh, no, it uh, closed in, at the end of, well, I think it was October 2000, oh, round yeah. about there, okay. yeah. Okay, gee whiz, because I, I mean, it was such a part of everything. And it's amazing how, how something that can be so much part of the fiber can just sort of slowly disappear. You know, yeah, it's, it's like, one day it's there, and next day it's gone. Yeah, next day and it's gone. Headline, I mean, no, the last headline was the last post, which made a lot of sense. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's so yeah. good. That is so good. And obviously, a, a team that you had there as well, you know, that, that used to, that, that, that you got to know. Mm. Well, yeah, my, my first job on newspapers was in the evening, on the Evening Post in 1973. Then I worked for motor companies for a while, then came back to okay. PE, worked for the Herald, uh, then tried right. something else, and then joined the Post. And that's what well, let's, let's, well, while you're talking about it, let's go back in history a little bit. Let's, let's, okay. did, we always start in the beginning. Where, where were you born? Where, where, were you, where did you go to school? Uh, born in PE, uh, okay. went to school at Gray. Okay. Some people say that probably changed me. I don't know. Um, I, I <laughs> well, didn't, it didn't. I don't know if it changed Gary, but I wish it had. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he could have been even worse. You never know. <laughs> yeah. You know. Okay, so grade junior and grade high. Yeah, both of them, and then um, tried UPE, which was then called UPE for a while. Yes, yes. Um, discovered a card game called Bridge, which seemed far more interesting than studies. Ooh. Yep. Bridge. So, so you're a bridge player. Yeah. You know, my, my folks in law are big into the bridge. You know, Bobby Cheatham says, watch with the gray hair. Well, I think it's all the bridge, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, Bobby can talk. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, yeah, bridge for a bit. That was the downfall. Then I had to oh, pay okay. back my loan. I was going to be a teacher. So I worked for Pelagals. Remember Pelagals? Yes, yes, with Tinny's, uh, Tinny's dad. Um, Mr. Smith, what was his name again? Um, I know, way before that, when it was still owned by Natie Solomon and was in North End. Oh, yes, yes, okay, okay. Sean Coase will remember that because he knows all those Okies. Dave yeah. Sternberg used to work That's there, it, I yeah. think. Yeah, he, he was, he was Natie's son-in-law. Yeah, he took over. Oh, okay. oh the yeah. son-in-law. <laughs> and Mr. <laughs> Miller was, was, of course, uh, Mr. Miller was, was Strand Music House. With That's right, sell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Millions of pianos at that time, which also just like the Weekend Post sort of vanished into the day, you know, yeah, nobody yeah, bought pianos yeah. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> who's that? Who's, is that Jackie or Jock K? Hey, or who's that's, that that's saying Jackie. that you look like? Short for Jacqueline. It's my step. Oh, Jacqueline. Yeah. You know, she's very rude, you know. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm going to see her in a week's time. She will find out. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know who Happy Rads is, but he's saying I be nice. Good. Yeah, I'm always nice. Ask him. I good. I good. <laughs> oh man! And Nicholas, is that your brother? Nicholas is my son. He he's a drummer. Oh, he's he's your son. Oh, okay. He okay, drums okay, for Nick. High Water Bridge. You must have heard of High Water. Oh yes, Bridge. yes, of course, of course. Okay, I I will have to meet him officially again. You know, I was probably yeah. knew him when he was too young. When he, was, well. when he was a lighty, yeah. Exactly. When he was a lighty. Well, here's Sean Coe saying, and I worked there in eighty and eighty one. He says. Yep. At Pelagals. Yeah. She was, the the, the Pelagals Old Boys Club could be quite good. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I mean, it was it was Pelagals, and of course, uh, it was before it was I don't know, it was Tempo was then uh, around no, that yeah, as well. Tempo was after there was Bothness. Bothness, that was the yeah. one. That was an and, 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 um, and A. H. Davidson. A. H. Uh, Davidson, were, Mr. Davidson was also uh, uh, Arnold, Arnold Davidson. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he yes. was a rep, I think. Anyway, yeah, yes. <laughs> 
Yeah, he's in that. Canada, I think, or somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. Uh, Candace is feeling left out there. I, what do you mean, and me? I don't know what she's talking about there. Did she also work? <laughs> no, she, <laughs> Candace is my is my doctor Clark. She's my daughter. She lives in Port Elizabeth. Oh. Yeah. Doctor Clark as well. Oh, very she's nice. Immune, yeah. <laughs> but not a medical oh, really? doctor. She, yeah. <laughs> Uh, right, okay. <laughs> Not oh, one of those. I've got to so, say hello to the NXP group. That's, that's a Facebook thing. Um, yes, Kat. Uh, yeah, you know, Kat, hundreds of expats. Oh, no, are Kat, she's lovely. And we keep in touch and, and reminisce and commiserate. Yes, those absolutely. She did. Uh, we, we, we had a. We, we had her on just about a year ago, actually, for Ooh. the uh, for for my um. Uh, Kat did a drop in for my uh, the, the the haunted thing. It was for for thirty first of October, Halloween. Halloween for yeah. Halloween, and she did a, she did a little drop in in a story. But the she sent me the outtakes, and they were they were much funnier than the story. <laughs> yeah, they did. So I think we must just play the outtakes this year. <laughs> Oh, my word. Uh, Boris has announced that SA is off the oh, road. Yes, was, yeah. See, there's my wife, Sidi Mathunde. I was going to announce yes. that to you. I was, going to, oh. I was going to do my Boris impersonation. But... Oh, do it. Do it. Well, I'm waiting. Well, that's because I can't do it. Because we're going, to, we're going to do these things. And we're going to, yeah, that's it. And I've told you everything you need to know. <laughs> right. <laughs> is he quick like that? You haven't got the hair, though, to match it. You need that hair. Well, I, I don't need to cover a ball spot. I'm convinced that's yeah. what he does. But yeah, <laughs> I think so. I think Richards so. is going bald, by the way. Keith. Oh, yeah, man. Eventually, yeah. Eventually. he must be 115 already. <laughs> You've got to go bald sometime. <laughs> Holy moly! Yeah. Uh, that's that's amazing. Okay, so, so Gray High School, UPE. Did you do journalism there, or did? No, I was, was going to teach geography, and or be a psychologist. Oh. Oh yes. really? <laughs> and, and I didn't pass psychology, so I decided, and I didn't like geography, so uh, I became a journalist. I'm convinced that psychology students just do psychology so they can try and sort out their own hassles. Because I've <laughs> to me to psychology, so he isn't but doing it. <laughs> well, yeah, are you talking about Mrs. Hemmings? Yeah, that too. Yes. yes. <laughs> Gary's not shaking his head or anything. He's just keeping <laughs> very, very quiet. <laughs> yeah, my wife is also a psychologist, so I have to keep quiet. See, there we go. You got to keep. Yeah. You got to keep it, yeah, because uh, they mm. they know. The problem is that they read it. They read your mind, even if you don't try and tell them anything. They, even well, if you keep quiet. Yeah, e even if you're not thinking, they read your mind. <laughs> Yes, exactly, exactly. What you're thinking about nothing? No, you're not. And then they tell you what to do. <laughs> yeah. You see, you see. No, okay, so Andre, so after after UPE and NMU, uh, how did you get into into journalism then? From from um, geography. <laughs> I don't, I didn't. I got tired of working for Pelicans. I didn't see that as a future. And okay. uh, I mean, you can only sell so many guitars before they're on the yes. go show, and then then you've got a whole year of nothing. Oh, you yeah, have nothing again, yes. <laughs> I applied for a job at the post and I got it. I was actually selling a car. I had a mini, a little yellow yes. mini 850. A mini? Yeah, oh, man. With, with the sliding somebody window. Tag, somebody must take Andrew Freeborn because he'll like you now that you've got a mini. He's, he was also on my show. He's a mini fa fan. Yeah. Absolute fanatic. I, I, don't have it, I don't even know who I sold it to. But I was selling that car while the editor of the post was online waiting to speak to me. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yes, and I came back. I came back and I said, "Right, the car sold. Hello." And I said, "Sutherland, here. Would you like a job?" So that was it. Oh, and that wow. was 1973, I think, before lots of people were born. Yeah. Yes, yes. Indeed. Well, I was, I was born. I was Good. born then. I was already three years old, and I had my first job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. No. No, so who's who's on your who's on your right that you keep looking at? Is that, is that Lynn? Is, is no, uh, yes. I'm just looking outside left. to see to see what the weather's doing. <laughs> is it, oh, it? I can tell you, it's crap because you're no, it's in England. Not, it's very pleasant. It's, it's about 18, 19 degrees. Oh, uh, lovely. Slightly overcast. Yeah. Lovely. It, it, it doesn't nice. always rain yet, you know. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Whenever I've been here, it's been raining. <laughs> yeah, they all they all say that. Yes. Yes. No, yeah, so, okay, some so people call it Mud Island, like Pete Van Niekerk thinks he lives yes. in Mud Island. Yeah. <laughs> Pete Van Niekerk as well. Oh my word! Yeah, he's Holy just down the road. Just, yeah. 
Oh, is he? Is he? So, I mean, God, there's so many expats now um, mm. overseas, and 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 thank goodness for 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 channels and stuff like this that we can just we can still still be in touch and and see you. It's amazing to see your face again. I mean, it's just like it's like bring yeah. back so many memories, you know. <laughs> well, I hope and, they're uh, so, good. I hope they're good ones. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, they're all good, all good. And and um, uh, it's okay. So so you got into journalism just yeah. literally by getting a job. I mean, how did he know to phone you? <laughs> well, I applied for a job. They, they, they were looking for a, okay. a junior reporter, and I put in an application and got it. And I got the job without my dad knowing. He was working there at the time as the circulation <laughs> manager. No, well, I didn't want to. I didn't want him to yes. know. You know, nepotism and, um, could have been nepotism. Yeah, that. Yeah, whatever that means. I've asked the ANC. <laughs> they know. Um, yes, anyway, they then, know. They know all that. Yeah. And I was sitting in the newsroom and he walked past and said hello. And two days later, he walked past and said hello. And then on the third time he saw me, he said, what are you doing here? I said, I work here. Because in those days, we didn't get bylines on the first day. You did the vegetable prices and the weather report. And oh, right. Like yeah. <laughs> and did you do the, 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 um, the thing, the, the, the swap column was oh, that, so, yeah. so huge. Yeah, that was big. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. I mean, if you think about the swap column in those days, Everybody, you know, you just the first thing you went and opened the swap column, check whether what deals you can find, yeah. and there were what, people, what crap you can buy. On a Saturday, there would be people queuing outside the Evening Post, outside the Weekend Post. So, like they queue here for yes. petrol now, just waiting to get the paper so they can buy a, a pram or a cot or whatever they wanted. <laughs> yeah. For what have you? For what yes, have yes, you? Yes, for, for what have you? Reason, That's the one. Cash. Yeah, because you weren't allowed to sell things. You see. Oh, I see. I see. For what have you? How about some cash? <laughs> yeah. That's how it works. Oh, my word. And uh, I mean, working at Pellegal, were you a muso as well? Yeah, I, 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 I play bass guitar. Um, I thought I was yes, going to say bass because I seem to remember. Yeah, that's one up from being a drummer, apparently. <laughs> it's, a, it's the brother of the drummer. The brother. That's it. We, 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 we keep them sensible. We, yes. We keep them at grounded as well, you yeah. know, because that, that was my favorite Charlie Watts, Charlie Watts quote. Someone said to him, yes. um, how, how do you uh, keep time, you know, in, in the stones? He said, you don't. We, we follow Keith Richards. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, my favorite, my favorite from Charlie was, um, you know, I, I, you know, he, he he reminds me, I don't know if you follow, follow Formula One at all. Yeah. Um, Kimi Raikkonen and, and Charlie yes. had, had a similar yeah. vibe, huh? Yeah, Kimi, Kimi's very got deadpan, the same yeah. thing, deadpan yeah. and mm. just tell it like it is, you know, don't, yeah. <laughs> don't know, no rubbish. And and my previous uh, bass player, Mike McCauley, I don't, I'm sure yeah, you no, remember yeah, Mike. He was in Cape Town now, yeah. Same thing, Kimi mm. Raikkonen vibe, you know, straight down the line, always the truth, the truth doesn't matter how hard it hits <laughs> or, or who it hurts. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, Sean says you, you played in the on the go before you wrote the column. Me? Uh, up once, yes. Oh, is it? <laughs> as, what as, was the band a, called? Versatile Creation. Creation spelled with the K. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, sneaky. <laughs> Gary Cunliffe was our drummer. Oh, yeah, I know Gary Cunliffe. You know Gary, good drummer. <laughs> he, was, he was 14 then. Yes. So we had to give him a drum solo, yeah. Oh, right. left-handed drummer, eh? Yeah, that's right. Lefty. Like, like, yeah, like was... Ringo Starr and Ian Pace, both left-handed. Yes, yes. Yeah, lefty, lefty. So Ian Pace actually plays left. Ringo yeah. plays right. It's just, which well, is he, weird. he couldn't that's afford a left-hand drum kit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you even got them. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Even, I just suppose you just put the Hyatt on the other side, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what you do, of... yeah. Mm. <laughs> and, yeah, and yeah. Sam, says, Sam says, did the vegetable prices on my first day at the Herald too. Yeah. Prices. <laughs> and if you got it wrong, there was hell to pay. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> My word. Yeah. Uh, there's Fiona Gleason saying how's it as well. Oh, Fiona Gleason. She lives in Ireland. I was in Ireland. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Her, her, her husband we here last weekend. They ran the London Marathon. Oh, wow. That's a, that, that is so cool. A friend of mine did the London Marathon. He ran it. He ran it in two hours, 44. <laughs> Here How is. is that? Yeah, yeah. Gareth, I, 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 I think Fiona decided to take a gentle, slow look at London. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, good. It's a better way to do it, I think. Mark Banks yeah. is saying, how's it there? Terry Herbst was the last person to see Ingrid Jonker alive. <laughs> 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 yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. Yes, uh, Terry, uh, uh, and Terry, of course, would have worked with you as well. 
Yeah, Terry Herbst and Donald Prosser, they had a lovely restaurant called the Sirufa and Duncan. Yes, yes, I stayed that. opposite yeah. that. Is yeah. Adele, Adele and George bought that eventually, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Bought it from them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think Adele was working there while they owned it. Okay. Because oh, they, right, right. they had other jobs as journalists. I wonder, yeah. I, I haven't if she actually looked them up. I'm going to see what, what's happened there. Because Rufan was, was like the place as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was very cool. Yeah. yeah it was, it was, I think it was the first place I knew in P that served um, pate. Oh, and really? Pate. Yeah, and, 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 or, or, or pate, if you didn't know how to pronounce yes, it. Pate. And, and, no, it's and, like a pate that they have there. <laughs> yeah, pate as opposed to pate. Um, it's a good pate. <laughs> and one guy rocked up at this meal and he started eating it with his spoon. He didn't realize we meant to spread it on, on, on Melbourne toast. Yes, yes, spread it on the Melbourne toast. Yeah. It was ever so close, uh, yeah. Oh man, but Donald Prosser, what a legend! And and uh, R.I.P. both of them, uh, Terry yeah, and, guys, and Donald. Yeah. And they stayed in in uh, in uh, Pearson Street opposite me. I, I I was when I was in my twenties, we were in Pearson Street, and they were across the road there. But um, mm -hmm. also did so many um, so many write ups eventually. And so you you obviously got into the arts through mm -hmm. that as well. You enjoyed the art, the write ups, and the and the stuff as well. Yeah, oh, yes. I, well, music has always been my thing. Talking Terry Herbst and music, he yes. did a review on Cliff Richard when Cliff Richard played, I think it was at yes. Crusader Grounds or Butter Asmus, I can't remember which one. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, in his review, he said how sad it was to see that Cliff Richard had to wear a hearing aid. He didn't realize it was <laughs> the in-ear monitor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> Because Terry, your know, Terry didn't hold back as well. He oh, also, no, yeah. you know, he, he'd give it hell if it was crap, you know. <laughs> That's right. And and he would always complain about microphone technique. He couldn't stand it if people breathed into the microphone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. oh man, I think he gave me some good ones. Ocean uh, ocean fish dish special today. Catch of the day is hepatitis, says Mark Banks. <laughs> Catch of yeah. the day is hepatitis. <laughs> yeah, you get that from a yellow fin. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, do, do you miss PE? Do you miss the old days? Well, yeah. Any well, we haven't, at all? Been, haven't been able to get there for over two years now. But okay. uh, now that it's open, we'll probably come in this December. That's the plan. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Christmas in PE. Imagine that for the first time in 21 years. That'll be fantastic. That'll be fantastic. Well, let us know when you're around and we'll get you in the studio as well for this or one of these live. Yeah, but I'll, I'll have to dye my hair first, apparently. I've been told. Oh, yes. <laughs> according to all your fans online. Yeah, yes. Ex-fans. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and uh, I mean, uh, so, so uh, Weekend Post, it was right the way through then. It was pretty much... Uh, is, are there any favorite memories that you have of PE? Anything that you that you think of that's ooh, like you remember? Like? Well, well, the most memorable things would be the things that were the toughest, like covering the language shootings, having the unrest yeah, towards the yeah. end of a plot out. That that was pretty rubbish. I remember no working when I was working for the Herald. Um, all the other news editors got called up. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so I would go to work at eight in the morning and then go home at about ten at night. Wow. And I, I remember one, well, I can't remember what day it was, driving past Greenacres and uh, yeah. seeing these blue lights behind me and this car stopped. And it was one of the provincial cops who I, who I happened to know. And he said, yeah. uh, do you know you just went through a red light? And I said, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. And he said, but you work for the Herald, don't you? So I said, yeah. He says, um, I know where you live. I'll take you home. And he drove all the way in front of me. Yeah. Really? His last yeah. name, yeah, and said, "Yeah, your okay." Yeah. Well, it uh, was nice to have it, friends. Yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 absolutely. If you know somebody, it was it was okay. Um, and mm -hmm. now I, I know that we've we've got a couple of surprises uh, for you tonight, Andre. Um, mm -hmm. Let me <laughs> let me let, let's let's uh, let's give you the first surprise first of all. Hang on, let's let's see what Gary's got in line. Yeah, hey, Andre. I love surprises, and you used to love surprising us as reporters yeah. back at the Herald. Gosh, yeah, back in the, yeah. the 80s. Yeah, a different time then. Uh, we all had notebooks. We used to get into taxis to go to events. 
Yeah, the, the, the we need sometimes have to write our reports from wherever we were. I remember the the paddle ski race from Port Elizabeth to East London and then going to a ticky box in Hamburg and dictating <laughs> the story to you. Yeah, you were a great mm -hmm. news editor and I'm glad we've been able to stay in touch all these years through Facebook. Yeah, wonderful memories from a different era. Thanks, Andre. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone. Bye. <laughs> a couple of little video, little video here from Debbie. Debbie Derry, yeah. she, actually, she actually lives literally 500 meters up the road here. So she's right. I could shout it to her from here, I'm sure. But she's. Uh, and I aren't think they moving to Doha or somewhere? They are. They are. They've just, they've just sold up. We saw on the, on the local WhatsApp group, you know, yeah. that they're moving. <laughs> and the new mm. people have moved in, I think. But uh, Debbie's been here for years, yeah. And obviously worked with you there at, at, at Evening Post. Yeah. Well, what we used to do, I don't know if you remember, Collegiate used to do carols in the Feather Market Hall. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. And, and, and our favorite job you reporter was when the girls were practicing for their, their Christmas carol service, they'd go in with a photographer, and the photographer would say to them, after taking the picture, get the names and walk out. <laughs> and Debbie was one of them and then had to, you know, and she's actually started with the first girl. I said, no, don't move, don't move. We've got to get... There were only like 300 names. We never used it. Oh, jeez. Like, yes, of course. But you had to yeah. ask all of them. Otherwise, they'd all feel left out. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Who were the photographers in your day, Andre? Says Barbara. Uh, there was Evert Smith, who looked a lot like Sir de Villiers Graf, who used to be the head of the United Party. There was Jack Cooper, uh, Colin Urquhart, Basil Hall. Oh, Mark Holmes, good Mark photographer. Holmes. He's yeah. still going strong, eh? Eugene, Eugene could see who's still at that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think uh, Mark runs a butcher shop now, I think. Yes, yes. Yeah. I buy some fantastic so. meat from him. Yeah, yeah you know, all the game as mm. well. He's got some lovely meat there. It's, it's at the corner of uh, 8th oh, Avenue and Euch Road, I think. Is it? Yeah, what, I think that's it, where it's. It, I haven't, I haven't been there for something. a while, but. Westville, that's right. It's yeah. Westville, Westville, Delhi. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Very nice. Very nice little posse mm. there. And I spot him every time I go in there. <laughs> it's great. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like you said, there was a different time back then as well. Uh, so ticky boxes. I mean, <laughs> ticky yeah, boxes. Yeah, well, as, as Debbie said, or if you were a court reporter, you would go, you would sit around and you, you would work out what case you wanted to cover, then go across to the cafe and have breakfast. <laughs> And then wait until yes. two minutes before deadline and phone the dictate typist and give your story. That's what you had to do. Yeah. None of us. And yeah. No, I was going to say covering rugby when they in the good old days when they played Test rugby at the Butte Rasmus Stadium, um, it would require three reporters wow. just to get the film from the stadium back to the office where somebody else will process it and then that reporter would have to take the film back to the stadium where there'd be a reporter waiting at the gate who would then take it back to the photographer who was running up and down the side of the field and saying who's that in negative three you know oh no way because that's a picture they want and then and then he would you would go to the sports editor so that's uh i don't know yeah Donnie or something yeah Gee, oh, yeah. so, uh, so, I mean, it, it's amazing because it, because the communication is just, um, it's, it's like uh, 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 catapulted now yeah. over, over oh, the last, totally, last yeah. 20 years. <laughs> and so, so I mean, that, that kind of thing had to be done. You had to actually physically oh. drive there and go and take the thing and say, what yeah. is this? You know? <laughs> right. And what's more, some of those photographers were almost as fast as the rugby players because they would see like the ball's gone yeah. to the wing and they want to get the try. So they'd sprint up the side. They didn't have to dodge players and be waiting. <laughs> waiting for the try. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah. She was. And so I think he's saying a little Sam Magella. I remember Sam yeah, well. Sam. Yeah, we used to call him Beach Ball. Yeah. He was as tall as <laughs> he, he was, was wide. He was, yes, he was tall as he was wide. Mm -hmm. He was four foot and four foot wide. <laughs> yeah. uh, what a legend. I remember mm -hmm. Sam well. Absolutely. And uh, I see, um, uh, I see, uh, Sean, Sean's uh, gonna catch, she says he's gonna catch the rerun. Well, Sean, you know, we know where your priorities lie, Sean. Host. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you can watch Saturday, that's fine. Because, yeah. of course, we're going to be have the Saturday crowd as well. So, hello to the Saturday crowd. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, we're going to re rebroadcast on Saturday. And, and but, but the, the timelines for, for, for the newspaper as well, that, that, was, that was a hell of a thing. Like, like, you know, you had to get it in. At, yeah. There was an early edition and a late edition. Yeah. Well, if you were working for the Herald, you had um, two editions because the first one went out yeah. into the country when it used to be distributed okay. around the eastern province. And then for the Evening Post, there were also two deadlines. The first edition would also go into the country, but not as far. And the second edition was the one that had to be at the factories when the factories closed. Wow. So if you worked for the Evening Post, you started work at 7-ish in the morning and finished by half past two. If you worked for the Herald, you would either do a 10 to 6 shift or 2 to 10 or whatever. And then there was the, mid, the graveyard shift when you went in at 4 and worked until the paper was finished. Holy um, moly. That, that wasn't news, always news fun. News the night before. Yeah, and Bobby Cheatham was on Yeah, He used to be the night editor for the Herald, so he would have the final say. Well, oh, sometimes. My word. Yeah. That is so that is so hectic. That, that, that's at the times, you know, that, 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 and, and so much work had to go in. And, and yeah. it's such a rush, you know, those deadlines. Like, oh, mm. my God, is it, the, the new paper's coming out in 10 minutes. you got it. Like, <laughs> I mean, how did they get it out that's so right. fast? Yeah. Well, it, 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 um. Just hold, well, there's that famous hold the press was saying. That's happened once or twice. Yes. There, there were some uh, Air Force jets crashed at the PE airport once. I can't remember. Yes. Uh, in the 80s, I think, in Impala. Yeah. And um, yes. I was at home. I'd, I'd finished my day shift, and um, a reporter was sent to fetch me to come back to the office yes. to do the story. And we had, like, six people covering this event. Debbie Derry was one of them. Colin Urquhart okay. was one of the photographers. Yes. And uh, I phoned the, the army. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. Because those, those no, so are quite phoned popular. The army PR. Yeah. yeah, they were. They, I think they were rubbish. But anyway, they probably got them from Italy. <laughs> they were Italian. Um, they were Italian, Andre. <laughs> yeah, they, they had they had Alfa Romeo engines. They used to stop regularly. Exactly. They were so good. Beautiful planes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, so quite a few people covering that story and, 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 and to get it yeah. back quick. Yes, and, and then I phoned, because I got information from the people out in the field, and I phoned the Army PR in Pretoria, and I said, two of your planes have crashed in PE. And he says, no, they haven't. I said, yes, they have. I'm telling you about it. He didn't know. Oh, my word. Yeah, so we knew before then. Then I went down Jeez. to EP Command, managed to get the names of the people, and phoned him yeah. back and said, now you must just tell us in your press release that this guy died and this guy's injured. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. this is what you're. This is, tell us this, and then we can we can pray. We can put in the yeah. press. You, you have to have both sides of the story, which yes, of course, of course. Yeah. Oh my word! You seen the yeah. seventy nine Grand Prix? Uh, the guess the news. Did you guess the news? Nineteen seventy nine. Who won oh. the Grand Prix? No. What happened? There was um, Jody. No, when I was working for Ford, Jody Schechter. Jody Schechter was going to win the world championship, and because he was driving a Ford powered car. We took a oh, chance to put out a press release. Myself and Bob Kernahan, who was now also worked for the newspapers. In those days, you had to mail things. You didn't. You couldn't email. Yes, so we yes. sent this to get to people on the Monday after you know, the day after the Grand Prix. And if he didn't win, we had another one we sent out to say sorry about the mistake. But fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, and those those were the days when he was driving a Tyrrell, had six wheels, four in front and two at the yes. back. For some no, two, two, two in four in front and two at the back. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It was amazing. Uh, and it's small, small, little wheels. Yeah, little that's wheels right. That front, like <laughs> and those, yes, that was, yeah. that was an amazing car. And of yeah. course, I mean, uh, we, we did a we did an interview with um, with the Scribantes here oh, a yeah. while ago. Mm -hmm. And of course, they they actually had teams um, with Bobby Charlton uh, racing F1 cars that they, they had provided, you know. Yeah. Um, Aldo Scribanti uh, bought, bought those Lotus uh, cars and, and, and I think they had the McLarens as well at, at one stage. And so during, during that time, it was, mm -hmm. I think it was McLarens um, that they were running. Uh, yeah. Incredible, incredible cars, um, and, and it was like you said, Cosworth engines. Eh? The, the the Ford, yeah, the Ford, Ford Cosworth engines. Mason things, yeah. Yeah, and a huge, a huge engine, and so beautiful. Those cars are beautiful. These days, the V6, come on. I mean, you know, it just doesn't oh, sound. The sound, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> God, the V8s are going to be way better, and the V12s and the V10s, you know, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's another whole story. That's another whole yeah. story. 
All right, I've got uh, I've got another little surprise for you, um, yeah, Andre. Let's let's have a look. Okay. Let's see who's coming on next. Okay. It's good to make contact. I hope you and Lynn are well. Things are going well in the UK, despite the Brexit fallout, long fuel lines, dwindling food supplies, and the rest. <laughs> Andre and I share a birthday, April the eighth. Yeah. yeah. Of course, I'm several years younger. <laughs> I've actually known Andre since I was a child as he and my brother Jonathan were at school together at Gray, and I was the little sister tagging along to school events. I don't think Andre was on the Herald when I joined the Evening Post in 1978, but he soon came back to be news editor. Andre, like all old school journalists, could write about anything, though music, films and sport were his particular forte. In those years, the Evening Post and the Herald were entirely separate. You kind of glimpsed the staff of the other newspaper in the passages or in the canteen. Later, Andre joined the Evening Post as assistant editor and was there at that very last day when the paper was closed in 2000. In 1995, on the day before the World Cup final, Andre came around with a list for a rugby sweep. I was cheap subbing the Evening Post and it was just near deadline. I was really busy and I couldn't even think of what a possible final score would be. So I just said, just write down 15-12. And of course, who won the sweep? The closure of the Evening Post meant a change in the lives of every one of us. I went over to the Herald um, and Andre and Lynn decided to immigrate and start a new life in the UK, for which I admired them greatly. It was a brave move. So Andre, wish you all the best. And regards to, to Lynn, keep well. Bye now. <laughs> There's such a beautiful story out of that. The last issue of the Post. Yes. Uh, we, one of the sports reporters, Andrew Hollerley, had missed yes. the second last edition, sorry. He'd missed a, a, a score. He had to put the scores in. And he said, as if in usual, that hasn't arrived. And that went all the way through and appeared in the newspaper. <laughs> so, so Susan called us all together and said, how can that happen? So Andrew said, well, we can apologize in tomorrow's edition because there wasn't one. <laughs> There wasn't another one. <laughs> ah, classic. Yeah. Oh, man, those those newspaper papers must be worth a fortune if you've got something. If you've got oh, one. Yeah. Because those are the days of line up where, where people had to use letters the wrong way around and put the newspaper together. And there were oh, lots of favorite mistakes that people would make, like suitcase, the U would become an H, you know, uh, and <laughs> stuff like that. It was good fun. Uh, mm. Because nobody would see it the, the long, wrong way around. Uh, so, yeah, I and then when it did come out, you'd get people trying to get them from the newspaper vendors, you know. You've got to take that <laughs> yes. back, there's a mistake in it. <laughs> yes, you've got to go, go take it back. Yes, uh, Bronwyn's asking, ask, ask Andre to tell us a joke. Uh, uh, tell us about his book, Real Change. No. The book, you've written a book. Yeah. Well, they, they say everyone has a book in them. I don't anymore because I wrote it. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying to do a second one. Real change is about the Langa shooting. It's based on life in South Africa at the time, in the 1985, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. 22nd of March, when the, the police shot 22 people dead in outside Utenek and then claimed they were attacked by these hordes of yeah. people carrying stones, yeah. Anyway, so it's based around that, yeah. No, I mean, it must have been quite tough. Uh, it must have been quite tough that that uh, whole that, that time, you know, because mm -hmm. you you're seeing the real story out there. You know, it's not just propaganda. That uh, you, you actually you were out there on the on the front line. Yeah, that's right. And then again, using ticket boxes because you didn't have yes. mobile phones or cell phones, so you would hope yeah. that the photographer was out in Langa would phone you because you wanted him to go somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. That type of stuff. Was, yeah. Wait, when was when was when was the book published? Your your book? Uh, about three years ago. It's on Amazon if you want it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Fact, you can read it for free. Oh, really? Yeah. On, <laughs> on Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Oh, Just look up real change, but there's a whole lot of real changes. Some are written by politicians, uh, but oh, mine right. is the real, real change. Okay. Real, <laughs> real change by Andre Rasmus. We have to get that one. Thanks, and, Brian. Uh, yeah. 
And your new book, uh, if, what's what's the new one now? You it's you've got be... only got one in you. You've got another one. No, no well, well, because I'm bipolar, I've got two books in me. Oh, um, there we go. <laughs> the, the, this one's going to be a follow-up to that story, but about gun running and how the IRA helped South Africa. Okay. I'm making it up as I go along. Yeah, okay, okay. So yeah. it's, a, 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 it's fiction. Yeah, well, fiction based on facts, I guess. Yes, yes, about but with uh, always based based on experience because you, uh, mm. uh, it it makes it more real if you do that as well. Yeah, <laughs> it, it gives us a bit of credibility. Yeah, it does, it does. Um, and uh, uh, let let's see, I've got. Uh, uh, oh, 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 Gary's Gary's asking me a question here. What what uh, what what are you doing at the moment? And and uh, and since you moved to the UK, I mean, you, you, so so you literally uh, the the weekend both closed, and mm. and you decided this is the moment. This is are we going? Yeah. You know? It was interesting because it closed in October. We weren't expecting it. Well, we knew it was on its last legs, but we thought it would last yeah. a while. Lynn and I decided we were going to move to the UK. I was going to hand in my notice the day after I got my bonus, because if you hand in your notice first, you don't get the bonus. Um, right. the, the bonus day never happened because the paper closed. So I spent the last few weeks at working for the evening for EP newspapers trying to sort out who got made redundant and who didn't. I was on a committee, so you'd fight for people's jobs. Um, yeah, and then we just decided to quit. So we left, um, okay. came here. The most, the dullest flight ever on Old Year's Eve. You thought it would be a party. Uh -uh, everybody went to bed, including the pilot, I think. Anyway. That, that's, that was Y2K. That was 2000. No, no, no. It was oh, after no. Y2K oh, okay. plus one. Yeah. Oh, okay. So 2002. No, yeah, right there. Was 99 to 2000 would have been the turn of the millennium, according yeah, yeah. to mathematicians. Um, yes, yes. Anyway, yeah. Yes, so we yes, came yes, here, yes. worked for a local newspaper, then got onto some magazines. I almost traveled the world writing about potatoes and bread. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. My word. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, 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 did, did, did you land in a job it, it's straight away over there, or did you? No. Uh, did you wait we, we, well, we got here on the 1st of January. Um, okay. And it was cold, it actually snowed. Uh, uh, Lynn ha had a, enrolled with a teaching agency, but didn't like any of the schools that they offered it. Well, she went to one or two. I applied for a job for a local free sheet, kind of like. East London, this Southeast London's answer to the I'll go express or I'll go a sun. The go sun, yes. Yeah. yeah. Worked there for a while and then <clears throat> moved to another job running a whole group of free papers for the Mirror, Trinity Mirror. And then okay. some guy came to me and said, I'd like you to write these magazines for me. So I did and did that for a few years until that collapsed. And then since then, I've been in semi retirement, I guess. Um, oh, right. Because <laughs> if you say you're retired, people think you're rich, so I'm not. So I'm semi retired. No, yes, yeah, semi retired. You'll take any, any jobs that are going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no. I would, and, and, and I mean, uh, any blogging, any, any anything oh, yeah, online I, stuff? I, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do lots of blogs about music because music's my okay. thing. So I've done yes. about 24 or 25, which someone suggested I should put together in a book. I might do that one day. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, well, that's what Hagen England did in the end, isn't it? I mean, he yes. didn't blogs, yeah. but he, but I mean, he wrote his short, short little yes. things, and and eventually put them together in a in a fantastic book. So, yeah, um, yeah that is a that. So there's another book in you yet, Andre. Three, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And I just I just want to just touch on quickly while while we, while mm -hmm. I'm looking at this the the picture in the background there. You, we 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 chatted oh. just before. I love that yeah. story. Nachtmusik is that the one? Yeah, no, it's it's Nachmusik. It's I got it from that uh, art shop used to be in uh, Walmart near Sixth Avenue or Eighth Avenue. Fort Ice Road, still still there. Fifth Avenue, it's still Fifth there. Avenue, still there, yeah. still there. For, for, Fort Ice Road, Fifth Avenue. Yeah, um, and I bought that because Nachmusik was the the, the drink, the chocolate yes. liqueur that myself and Lynn liked, and that's how we kind of got to know each other, sharing <laughs> some 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 Nachmusik. So we saw that and bought that. So that's been. Um, a pleasant memory for us. Apparently, Nachmusik was written by some guy named Mozart, who I think oh, was a keyboard player for ACDC. Yeah. Yes, I think he was, yes. <laughs> a keyboard or, or, or player maybe for ACDC. Because they were German, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would have been the Scorpions. <laughs> <laughs> Beverly Erickson saying, how's it? Hello, Andre. Always enjoy Hi, dealing Bev, with yeah. you at the Evening Post. <clears throat> Bev, uh, at, at uh, NMU as well now as well. Margie yeah. Gush. Oh, Margie Ford. Uh, and how she wants to know how you guys are doing. 
That's, we we that's, find uh, that. Robin Margie, and you know Rob Rob Gash, uh, Margie's husband, of course, mm-hmm. was uh, was one one of the first guys that really got me into int- into music as well because he was such a, a fantastic. You know, if if Rob was at the party, then there was mm-hmm. a guitar and there were piano. You could play piano and he'd sing, and uh, you know, it, those those uh, those times are are amazing when 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 you you you're playing as a musician and mm-hmm. you're playing in, with friends and family and and making a party happen. I mean, yeah. everybody's. Everybody's chilling and Netflixing these days. You know, you don't get this stuff anymore. Yeah, you're right. But, but those used to be f- fun days. And, and, and the best yeah. part about music is the jam you do before you play the song. Yeah. Because yes, there's a yes, lovely exactly. little bit of magic that will never happen again. Yes. Because after that, you know, it's got to be C, A minor, F, G or whatever. Yeah, and it yeah. starts. So, so it's, the little, it's the little thing before you start, the little <laughs> intro and the vibe. I see Catherine says, sounds, sounds like South Africans on yeah. It does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I haven't said even Hazuk yet, say, or is it? You're, you're, well, I don't know. If you just say Hazuk, it's be fine. <laughs> what, what, what is that What is that surname? That, 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 uh, that looks like a, um, there's something out of, uh, it's, is, it, is it also German? I don't know. What is that Hazuk? Yeah, come on, tell us, Catherine, where is that? Uh, who, who did you marry, Catherine? <laughs> there we go. All right, we've got another su- surprise here coming. Let's, let's, let's get into the I next one. I enjoy this surprises, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, hang five. Yeah. We've got it here. One, two. There we go. All right. I used to work with Andre Rasmus at the Herald in Port Elizabeth. Um, I was chief sub and night editor and Andre was um, news editor of the Herald and also he worked on the Weekend Post. Um, Yeah, we had a very interesting uh, time together. I don't know if you can remember Andre, the troubles that we went through during the great uh, lockdown of newspapers and all that where we weren't allowed to publish certain information we had to get uh, permission from the police and the security police uh, to uh, publish certain articles we had to send them the articles first and then they had to approve them and all that sort of yes. stuff so it was a very trying time for us um, a lot of people couldn't handle the pressure uh, there was a lot of people with mental fatigue from that and uh, yeah it was a great time I must say it was very stressful, but the time we were going through great change in South Africa and um, thank goodness we all, most of us, managed to survive. There were others, other journalists who uh, didn't and uh, they were actually locked away. Nobody knew they were locked away. Even their wives didn't know where they were when they used to come all times of the day and night and arrest you. Yeah, as I said, it was very interesting, but very stressful times. And uh, Andre, I don't know if you remember, I don't know if you remember uh, the Craddock Fall. Um, that was one of the, the very stressful times for all of us in the newspaper, especially at the Herald. And uh, then there was also people that just disappeared off the face of the earth and they were never seen again. And uh, yeah, well, as I said, it was very stressful times. And then also at the Herald, we had um, people that worked with us were in fact working for the security police. So everything that we were planning to put in the paper the next day, they knew about the uh, hours before we published the paper. And of course they could, uh, if they wanted to, uh, stop the publication in New South Wales. Thank goodness uh, it didn't happen to us, but it happened to many other pe- uh, other newspapers in Johannesburg. Andre was a, an absolute star as news editor. Um, many people respected him for what he was doing because his job was very, very difficult for him. Um, he had to choose between what to publish and what not to publish and some of the time uh, we decided to or he decided to take a chance and push the boundaries push the envelope and thank goodness we got away with it 
Um, Jean Andre, as I said, had a great sense, has a great sense of humour, um, and uh, times were tough, uh, tough at the newspaper, but uh, Andre always managed to crack a smile amongst us and all that sort of stuff, and uh, we always had a, a well. I wouldn't say under had, but I had a, a bottle of whiskey in my bottom <laughs> drawer and after work of a night, uh, just to relieve the pressure, we used to have a, a dop or two. And sometimes uh, we used to finish publishing the paper at about two o'clock in the morning. Jeez. And there were many a time when the sun was rising and we left work to go home. Andre, to you and Lynn, uh, I wish you the very best and uh, keep in contact and uh, as I say all the best to you and the family over in England. Thanks Andre. Cheers. Bye-bye. Oh, he seems like a legend. <laughs> this, this is like a eulogy. I feel like I should be dead. <laughs> You're not dead yet, no. Erasmus. <laughs> Working on it, yeah. <laughs> Interesting that, that I mentioned Bobby and that thing he was talking yes. about about the Craddock Four, which was an incredibly stressful time. Yes, that's that's in the book that Bronwyn said I must mention. So that's the last okay. and final plug for the book. Well, no, it's fine. You can plug it as much as you like. It's <laughs> fine. Uh, you know, it's 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 incredible because like he's talking about the those guys that 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 were basically on the payroll. So mm -hmm. they, you know, they they know what was going on. And you, ne you could uh, never work out who it was. You'd always suspect certain people, but you really you couldn't prove it. Yeah, you, you you'd hire them, but then they'd be paid by the security police as well. Well, yeah, you, I mean, you'd hire somebody as a because he was a good photographer or a good reporter. Yes. Um, and then I was approached by the security police who offered to pay my mortgage for my bond for me. Um, oh, really? I gave them info. Yeah, that type of stuff used to happen all the time. Uh, well, not all the time. And, and then if you were radically left wing, um, they, they would then try and sort you out as well and, and uh, just, just harass people the whole time. Wow. So it, was, it was interesting. Mm. Yeah, that is, that is so, it's, it's just a, a different time and a different place. You know, um, so how do, you, how, but how do we know for sure that you weren't one of them? How about, how do you know? <laughs> um, I suppose I could, if this was America, I could plead the Fifth Amendment, but um, All right. <laughs> I, I think people who know me would know. So yes, absolutely. Yeah. No, 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 I, I mean, wasn't. I mean, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Lucille Parker says, I worked at the Herald with Honor Erasmus, and uh, great days they were, enjoying this immensely. Lucille, she could have been one of them, you know. You never know, Lucille. Who could Lucille be? lives in Frome in Somerset, which, if you I like, know. Formula One was the home of one button. Jensen Button. Jensen Button. Oh, he's still doing Frome. a bit of commentating. I like Jensen. Yeah, yeah. I do. he's on the button, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, excellent, Lucille. Uh, you know, just saying, uh, 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 numbers isn't maths. If uh, even I know that says says uh, says happy reds. Uh, <laughs> he's talking about my maths. Yeah. No, you know, uh, 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 like I said, different times. So, so I mean, at, at that time, it, like he said, journalists were disappearing. To, to, you know, uh, yeah. if you were left left on the left side, and there were guys yeah, were harassing yeah. you. And, yeah, and, and it, it happened, well, not too much on our side. There were people who would disappear for a while. They, they had this horrible law where you could go to jail for 180 days under Section 205, I think it was called, if you didn't give the government the information they thought you had. And yes. uh, oh, so it's a state of emergency stuff. Yeah, state of, and, and you weren't allowed to put white spaces in the newspaper. If, if you had a story where so-and-so said this happened, and you left a gap and you said, and that's what the government said, that that became illegal. So you had to get a quote from them that was carry the same space as as the fact. And as a journalist, you weren't allowed to witness an incident of unrest. Oh, you that's, weren't allowed to? No. But you certainly did. Of course you did, yeah. But then you <laughs> couldn't say what you saw. You had to tell you had to get someone else to tell you what you saw so you could write about what they saw. Oh my yeah. word! So, so literally, I mean, you, you had to clear everything with security police before you actually yeah. put it in the yeah. paper. Yeah, security police became, from that point of view, almost our best friends because you spoke to them so often. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. And then and you'd phone, like if you're working for the Herald, as Bobby said, you'd phone at five to eleven, 
in the evening and yeah. say, we need a comment from you by quarter past, please, because deadline's yeah. at 11.30. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also what to print and what not to print. I mean, you, you basically, you had the hammer there. You, you were, you, you, for a while there, you, you were the guy that was, that was putting it out there. You, you, were you not in danger at any, any time? Um, yeah, probably. Uh, but yeah, yeah it's, 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 I don't know. Um, if, if other people disappeared, how come we didn't? I remember going to court because they wanted us to give some information. And we got off on a, on a grammatical error in, in the summons that they gave us. Wow! Mm. Holy crap! I mean, were, were, were there any were there any uh, guys that, that 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 were involved with the security police or the, those guys that 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 you felt were conflicted about their role that that they were they were possibly you know uh, at odds? You mean guys within the security police? Yeah, yeah, like guys yeah, you're talking I, I to. I mean, yeah, there were quite a few who probably thought at, when they got into that it was okay, and then realised. Yeah. The error of their ways, possibly, um, yeah. and then change jobs or, or got out as soon as they could. Um, yeah, some of them, the some of them were actually very nice people. Some of them had this agenda that you couldn't believe yeah. there were people like that. Yeah, because you, you know, you, you you think about. I mean, we, we, all of us were conscripted. We were told we had to go and fight against the Cubans. We had to go and fight in in Angola. I mean, and 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 you realize. Uh, now that it was just futile and it was wrong and yeah. so so you know it's all that it's all that uh, uh when when you when you uh, are forced to do something you know how do you get out of it how do you how do you not do it if, if how are you conflicted in your head it's a crazy yeah. crazy times well and i think that's how some people got into the police force because it was an easier option than going to the border yes and, and yes. if you joined the police they would pay for your studies and stuff so you could study and become high, higher up the ranks um, right. Whereas we, as uh, unsuspecting young people, went to the <laughs> army, and the only way you could get out was to be a conscientious objector. And if you were a conscientious yes. objector, you'd go to jail. The other way you could get out, <laughs> get out was to declare yourself gay, but then you would go to jail. So um, <laughs> as well, as well. well I'm, I'm sure that when conscientious objectors got to jail, they, the rest of the guys were told he's gay as well, and then you see yeah. what happened. So yeah, yeah you just went to the army and did what you had to do. Jeez, like yo. Okay, we've got some we've got another surprise. Here we go. Here's another one. Where in the world are you? I think of you so often in those busy, busy days we had on the Herald and the evening post fighting the fighter. I'm sure you remember them so well. I'll always remember your excellent sense of humor, love of art and music, and the mischief you could get up to sometimes. <laughs> For those who don't know me, I'm Pat Candido. I was on the Herald and Post. I was news editor on the Herald for many years. I knew so many people. Today, I no longer watch the obituary notice because most of them have gone. But it was such fun. It was a part of my life I will never forget and the people that I worked with. Andre, you were always perceived with the greatest respect. You were always polite, always considerate, despite your sense of humour, and <laughs> people found it very easy and pleasant to work with you. And I, know, I wish I could recollect all the things that happened in our lifetime. There were so, so many. But I'm now 80 years of old, and the memory shows that. So <laughs> I'm quite sure you will remember many of the things that I have forgotten. And uh, when I think of the standard of newspapers in our day, the sub-editors, the work they do, and I see what is printed today, I don't even want to read it. <laughs> I hope you and Lynn are still having a fabulous time, and I wish you everything of the best for the future. <laughs> Shame she is. Gosh, there she are so many like, stories. I just want to go to her. <laughs> yeah, she, she's cool. Yeah, Beth Candida. Her, her maiden name was Trollope, but she oh, said right. she wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is she part of the the famous Trollops then? I, th I think she was. I don't know. I, she was very good at at holding her liquor. I must say that because when you worked for the Evening Post in the good old days, you could go have tea at ten o'clock at the Markham Hotel, which would normally be oh, a right. Pass. Uh, or line was just up the road. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Around the she, corner. She would, she would be there with the boys and keep in pace. 
<laughs> Very good journalist. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. What, what, I mean, what, so she was news editor. Um, after, after sometime after me, when I was a reporter on the post, she was a senior reporter. Then okay. um, I moved away, and when I came back, she was. I can't remember what, she, but she did end up being a news editor somewhere along the line. Okay, yeah. okay, oh, magic. <laughs> no, she. I should. I, I just feel like going to hug her. That is yeah. so true. What she says, journalism used to be a respected profession, but sadly, no more. It's all fake news, and that's the problem these days. It's it's, it's like so media. much information from yeah. so many different sources. True. Huh? Yeah, because because then in in those days, in the good old days, which I said I'd never say. Um, you had to prove that what you had was correct. Now, someone sends you a video clip of, of a bomb going off and says this happened in Beirut, and you say, yes, it did, you know, because that's yeah. because you've got all these deadlines you have to meet, and there's the, so you'd only be outdone by social media, I guess, if you work for a yeah. newspaper now. So, yeah, oh, yeah. I, and standards have plummeted because yeah. I remember the ANC having a press conference in Port Elizabeth and calling a bunch of journalists together, including the late, great Patrick Cull, and say, yes. saying, how do we do this? And we said, how do you what? And they said, how do we tell you in advance what we're going to do? Because we never used to do that. We'd claim it afterwards. And they <laughs> wanted to start the electioneering, and they had no idea how to go about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Gee, so that they needed your help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and, and the then... And we and we said to them then the newspaper's job is to be the watchdog of society. So if you become in charge and you and you screw up, we're going to complain about it. And then they got upset. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine how upset they would be now. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I see Val yeah. Green saying hello as well. She's also on. Oh, Val, yeah. Here we go. Uh, but but you you so you're so right about that. The watchdog of society. It yeah. used to be. That's what it used to be. But yeah. the, the problem now is that there's just so much out there and, and there's so many rabbit holes that you go in. And like they're talking about this whole Facebook story. I mean, what's your yeah. take on this whole thing? Well, yeah, it's, I, I don't think so, social media is great if you're an expat and you want to keep in touch with family yeah. and friends. <laughs> um, but the news you get on, on Facebook, people, bad news sells, all right? That was always yes. the thing with, with newspapers. Um, yes. If, if somebody turned 100, that would be somewhere in the paper. If someone died at 99, that would be a bigger story. Um, <laughs> and, and, and then the trouble with Facebook and other social media is it's the bad news stories that you read about. So if I yes. look at, at the XPE Facebook group, which I'm on, most people, yeah. are, the idea of the thing is to remember the good old days, but yes. everybody's complaining about how things are now <laughs> because, because <laughs> the standards aren't what they used to be. You know. Yes, yes. Um, and that, I think, is the trouble with social media. It, it, it tarnishes everything. Uh, it does, it does. And, yeah. you know, it, and, it's, and it's so difficult to get that, that, that positive feel through, you know, because everybody's got to bite on it. If, if, you, yeah. want, if you want that, that, that positive movement, you've got to – and this is pretty much what the show, the, this show has, has, has been about. It's about, yeah, it's it's about promoting. moving forward, man, looking forward. Don't worry mm -hmm. about what cuck has happened now. We, we've, yeah. got, we, we've had this – this moment of COVID and and all this shite that that's happened over the last two years, and nobody's been more hit than the than the musos and the, oh, and, the entertainment. And the yeah. Entertainment. Um, we have got to we've got to stand up and go forward and and look forward because if you don't, if you keep on looking back as well, it's it's, it's lovely to look back at memories and lovely <laughs> memories, but you can't you you can't always look at at at. That, that, that the portals are so bad and the governing is so bad. We've got to make it better from now. That's what yeah. we've got to do. Exactly. I mean, hopefully everybody learns from their mistakes and tries to make things better. Um, yeah. And if you, you have to be positive. There's no point in, in um, going down with a ship, for instance. Um, yeah, yeah. I do believe that everybody, as, as as human beings, I do believe that 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 we want the obviously we want good we want good we want our lives to be better. So mm -hmm. in order to do that, we all have to be positive. We have to move forward. Yeah, yeah, you got to. I mean, otherwise you're just going to stagnate and, and and become like the rest of them. The, the, the yes. them, them thing. Yeah. Yes, them. <laughs> yes. Anthony Jennings saying, "How's it nice to hear from you, Anthony?" Oh, nice to hear from you. 
Mm. Yes, lovely. And Aubrey Coldry, I don't know Aubrey, but uh, Aubrey. Andre, maybe happy memories. Aubrey, Aubrey used to be the uh, the boss of Ster Kineko in PE. Oh, um, right. And, and they used to give us movie previews. They had a little exclusive theatre at the bottom of Albany Road. And all the, yeah. the, the movie writers would go along and, and have a dog with them and then and some biltong and, and watch a movie, which at was the good. the bottom of Albany Road? Yeah, where BM oh, Cotton yeah. is or used to be. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah the, that little building there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the jewelry place used to be there. Yeah, that's right. They, they had a, a little preview theater there, which was very cool. felt very posh. Oh, yeah. no ways. Oh, yeah. very cool, very cool. It's, it's not so much that there's uh, there's so much going on. It's that they take the money in to spread lies or hide the truth. It's time they start mm -hmm. arresting the reporters who keep the masses uninformed or misinformed. You know, yeah, oh, it's you know, it, it's so yeah. difficult because the, the the press is the 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 news is now coming so fast. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, yeah, the, the the trouble too, I think, is uh, I saw what, I saw what you wrote there. Um, yeah. I don't think the papers are impartial anymore. I think they all have agendas that they work to. Yeah, and that's that's not only in South Africa. That's probably global. Sure, I think. I, mean, I suppose it was. Yeah, it w was it not always the case? I mean, which newspapers were left wing and which newspapers were right wing at the time? You know, at, oh, yeah. at that time even. Yeah, and, and and the obvious thought was that the Afrikaans papers were right wing and the English papers were left wing, um, yes. which wasn't always the case. There were some people on yes. the other uh, like Piet van Nieker, who who yes. Were, fought for what they believed was the right thing. And the Evening Post fought for the liberation of the black folk. And then yeah. and then when that happened, when democracy happened, the Evening Post died, which was kind yeah. of weird. But Yes. I know after all that work, yeah. our work is now done. You know? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. it. Yeah, move on. <laughs> yes. So we did. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, personally, for you, Andre, I mean, how much of your identity is now British, and how much are you still South African? I mean, do you do you feel that you is it home now? Yes, I've uh, been here twenty one years. If if England yeah. plays South Africa at rugby, I'll support England. Um, <laughs> Damn you, Erasmus! Damn you! <laughs> and well, you, you got to. I mean, these guys have given me a home, so yes. I, so I've got to support them. Um, I'll give you that. That's fine. But, yeah, I, I, I do miss, really inside, there are things you miss about South Africa. And, and uh, well, as I mean, Africa's in your blood, lots of people say. And so I'm probably African, but I'm now a British African. I do have a British passport. My South African passport's expired and I can't get it it's renewed. expired. Yeah. Oh, my word. I'll put in a good word for you. you know, <laughs> yeah. on... With Mr. Fitch or Mr. Beads. Oh, I'll speak to Mr. Fitch and see what yeah. he has to say. Paula Brazali, Paula and Ernie, uh, she says the man that was uh, man that was a real good old day. So uh, uh, it's, what? So not so not like staying at home and watching Netflix. You know, so you're right. <laughs> you're yeah. right. Like, uh, yeah. Going out to the movies as well, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, Paula, Paula was that VP with us as well. She was a VP girl. As well, you were great. You were grey boy, though. Hey? Grey boy. Um, Lynn taught at VP for a while. Oh, okay. I remember Peter Holloway very fondly. Yes, but no, no, was was Lynn there when I was there then? No, nah. possibly. No, I don't think so. No, Peter uh, Holloway was probably after I left. Yeah, the late early nineties. Yeah, yeah, early nineties. Nineties would have been yes. Yes. Dear Lord, now I'm going to have 30 minutes of complaining about supporting UK rugby from the team up from upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, honestly, you know, I, surely when they play other people, though, then you support South Africa. You know, it's like when we play Oz. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah that's true. Borka, yes. Then you go, go Boca. But England yes. said you're conflicted. I won't well, say that yeah. you could support them because I can't believe that. You're still conflicted, but, you, but you, you'll say that you support them. Yeah. Well, yeah, if, if, if South Africa play New Zealand, I'd like South Africa to win. Um, yes. but after all, the, the South African captain's an old grey, so hey, got to get that in. Oh, they, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. These, he's our man. It's, mm. it's all from Glebecha now, hey, Glebecha. We, uh, Anthony yeah, Jennings saying, um, saying, do a profile of your favorite 70s album. That's a good idea, Anthony. Tell us about mm -hmm. your – what was the first album that you ever bought, Andre? <laughs> Would you believe Herman's Hermits? Oh, 
you know, I could have, I might have guessed that. <laughs> I might have guessed that. Late 60s? Yeah, and because it had Mrs. Brown, you've got a lovely daughter on it, which is probably the <laughs> crappiest song of all time. Um, and then I discovered the Rolling Stones. Oh, yeah. Okay, the yeah. bad boys of rock and roll. Got to do it. Oh, actually, the good, yeah. Um, and they're still going. Well, what's left of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, no, yeah. for sure. I see P Peter Swat saying hello here as well. I've got. Uh, oh yes, I remember. Pete. Yeah, Peter Peter's from from uh, he's in Ribe Castile now. I That's believe. somewhere uh, in the Western Cape. Yeah. Yes, Peter, we'll we'll have to have you on sometime as well. We'll talk about your yeah. your uh, you shenanigans. Have. Down you would have lots uh, of stories working for the tertiary education. Yeah. Yes. What well, was it? Technicon, eh? It was Technicon, and then that didn't they amalgamate with UPE? Yes, I think oh, they did. Then, yeah. I, I can't remember if Peter was, uh, he must have been there at that time too. Mm. And, and Lynn's saying, not that old. Not that old that she could have taught you, yes. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 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 oh really, Lynn? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was 88 matrix, so it was before her time. It was just, just before the. And, uh, yeah, so I, I mean, um, it's it's uh, it's crazy thing that 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 as as a South African as well, you you've kept your accent. You haven't got one iota of a, of an English accent there. Well, funny that because okay. some people, Lynn, who was born in England, some people think she's more South African than I am, um, <laughs> because she says "yaw" yeah. a lot and she says "cool drink" yeah. instead of "soft drink." Um, but and but some yaw is quite posh, though, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, if you ask her to do something, she'll do it now, now, or just now. Oh, yeah, there we go. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yaw is quite posh to say yaw. Yaw. You know, if you yeah, say yaw. It is. Yeah. It is. So Peter's working, Peter's work, Peter's working at, at Stellenbosch Uni now. Fantastic. Oh, okay. mm. No, we'll definitely have to have you on, on as well. Peter, we've got to, we've got to, we'll, get, we'll get in touch sometime. We've got to have you on. Bring the Glebeche, the Berghies. We're calling ourselves Berghies now, uh, Andre, <laughs> <laughs> from Glebeche. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How did that come uh, about? Yeah. I don't know. We're going to make it a thing. We're going to make it a thing. <laughs> okay. uh, I, I think we've got another surprise for you. Here All we right. go. Okay. Very, very interesting. This after so many years, and I can still remember that when you left us at the Herald and uh, to go overseas, in those days it was quite a mission moving. I know you were under very much pressure in the job as ed uh, news editor it was a demanding position and at the newspaper it is you must know your readers and what they want and that was one strong point of yours getting the news in that our readers wanted you were obviously also in charge of the photographers who played a major role in getting the news in. For those who obviously don't know me, and well, there are probably very many, I was heavily involved in sport in Port Elizabeth, coached the EP rugby team, and also was sports editor for uh, many years at the Herald 36 years before I retired. In plain English, it was in the apartheid years when, uh, you know, it was a dominance. We did have two sections where uh, people of colour gave their stories and uh, what, so it was a dif difficult balance for a news editor, which he was, uh, to uh, sort of control. Um, we also had a very demanding editor who knew what the readers wanted and um, Andre had to hear from his side and then also all the reporters under him, uh, he had to give them different things to do. So uh, his position was very uh, vital in the build-up for the newspaper. Andre was, um, I don't, can't say that he was a people's man, but to be a, a news editor, you had to be able to work with people and also get the best out of them. 
I think, and he, he succeeded to a certain degree because the reporters under him did very good jobs, but it depends on the news editor to ensure that he gets the right person for the right job. And I think that was one of his strong points. Andre, I wish you the very best and your family that you even go stronger and further in your uh, life. <laughs> Stan to Blanche. Tell me about Stan. Stan. Stan the man. He used to play scrum half for EP. I think he was oh. one of the first guys to play rugby with contact lenses. <laughs> and if I remember correctly, this could be legend. He lost a contact lens on the field and the whole game stopped and all these guys were looking for this little piece of plastic so he could play on. Yeah. <laughs> he could only see with one eye. Oh, that's funny. And was he talking about Rick Wilson? Uh, um, not too many people. Before Rick was Derek Smith and Derek Smith was okay. more... Derek yeah. Smith, Rick wanted to turn the Herald into like a tabloid paper, you know, like, like the sun is in this country. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He wanted more shock horror things. So are oh, you talking okay. shock horror? Yeah, he yeah. wanted headlines to be shock horror. And yeah. we found a story where some guy was electrocuted, going fishing near the Dolosa, and uh, yeah. the headline was shock horror, because that's what happened. The guy <laughs> behind him saw him shock. get shot to death, yeah. And we got horror. Oh yeah. my word! Jeez, like that is so hectic with his with his with his fishing rod. Oh no, yeah. that's just terrible, man. Yeah, so and so I, Rick Wilson would have appreciated that. Uh, Derek yes. Derek Smith would have had a more sedate yes. headline. Yeah, yeah I see shock horror indeed. Oh my word! Because I, I know Gary was talking about Rick. Um, uh, uh, yes, yes. At one, he he was in the, he was in the office because center stage used to get a lot of. Uh, a, a lot of coverage and, and, yeah. and kudos to Rick for giving giving us that that opportunity but um the one time he was um he was in the office with you guys and Rick was crapping all over everybody because center stage had three stories in the one paper yeah <laughs> in different sections in about the same show yeah. <laughs> yes that's right <laughs> And, and, and then Rick would get all annoyed because Gary was getting free publicity and Stuart Kinnikor had to pay for the little slot that said the latest James Bond movie is coming or whatever it was. But the difference was Gary was promoting local talent or promoting talent locally. Yes, and that of was what we picked up on and saw as the good side to it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you for that, uh, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so funny, though. But, but when Gary's actually there and he's crapping on everyone, but don't give it to him. <laughs> shock horror. <laughs> <laughs> we used to make up headlines using as many shock horror type words in one sentence as possible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, classic. Oh, man. I see mm -hmm. Alec Riddle saying hello as well. He's another sportsman. We've, we've had him oh, on yeah, too. Oh, yeah, Alec, yeah. Uh, supported many of us in our early sporting days. Of course, uh, Alec was running with those guys, Johan Furi and those, yeah. and those uh, Bruce Fordas and those guys that were running at that time as well, the Comrades guys. And that was, uh, that was yeah. also, uh, did you, you get involved in the sport as well? Yeah, a little bit. I, well, I kind of got involved in promotions. And uh, for instance, talking about Alec Riddle and, and Johan Furi, the Herald used to do a thing called the Street Mile. I don't know if you remember that. The yes. main street mile uh, that would run from Albany yes. Road to the City Hall or whatever it was. Wow. And there was a okay. guy named, okay. I think it was Garnet Cantor, who owned the Seaview Game Park. And he had this yeah. tame leopard. And we yeah. wanted to get the picture of this leopard chasing Johan Furi down what was then called. Oh, cheetah. Main, yeah, <laughs> called Main Street. The point was that even Johan Furi could beat a cheetah. Anyway, so, right, he, yes. so Cantor rocked up with his Cortina station wagon with a cheetah in the back. <laughs> And we're busy setting up this picture. Yeah, and we're busy setting up this picture. And and some guys walked past and saw this cheetah in the car, and there's this huge pandemonium going on behind us. Uh, and we didn't know what the fuss was because it was a tame cheetah. Anyway, it made a great photograph. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh my word! All right, we got another surprise for you. Here we go. Come on, okay. we got something. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I was surprised talking to Andre Rasmus at this <laughs> distance and after this time. <laughs> Um, but we were together for quite a while at the Evening Post and uh, and then at the Herald, which is, you know, from 
2007 when I retired. And uh, he was quite a guy <laughs> because uh, he sort of took over from me when I was unable to do the job. Um, if I was away for a weekend or something like that. And, uh, and he, we worked quite closely together. And the thing I remember about him was how fast he was. He was twice as fast as I was. I would say <laughs> that you were an all-rounder. You could handle anything on, on the job, you know. And that was rare in any journalist. Whereas I was especially a, a, a shows man. You could do anything. For example, when um, the footage came out and there was a, a concert in the park, uh, we went to the, the meeting at the airport and uh, you actually did the interview, not me, which was the thing you wanted to do. So you could do it, you know. And uh, what have you been doing with yourself? You know, are you still in a you know, writing game? Are you with a newspaper or with a, a firm like that? And, uh, and I'd, I'd like to know because, you know, that's the sort of thing that, that interests me. And uh, you'd, like, you'd like to know that we still have showtime on the go, which is <laughs> after <laughs> three years, it's still going. And I remember you as having a, a very fast brain. Because when you took over from me, you did it like a bomb, you know? and uh, it, it just shaped all of a sudden, you know. And uh, but of course, it wasn't as neat as me, <laughs> certainly not. But uh, nobody had a brain like mine, so that's the, <laughs> the main thing about it. Yeah, uh, we really miss you in the office now, yeah. because uh, when I go in, which isn't very often these days. Uh, you're not there, <laughs> and you were there for so many years. And I hope you will. I hope the family is well, because they're bigger now. And, uh, and I hope your wife as well. Oh, show them, Bob. <laughs> where, where did you find these guys? You know, Gary's been on a mission today. He's been out and about. <laughs> wow, well done, Gary. Yeah. Oh no, he's. I think he's a, he was on a, a full-on mission. I, I, I didn't hear from him today at all. So I know that he's, he was out and about doing stuff. So I presume he got all these guys in. And, uh, and you know, Bob, uh, it's still showtime. It's still going yeah, as well. Yeah, I heard that. Yes. <laughs> if, if, if they ever put a star on a pavement in PE like they do in, in Hollywood, it should be yes. like Bob Evely. Absolutely. Yeah. They will have to be the first one, the, the finger, the handprints. Yeah. Yeah, him, <laughs> him and then Gary. Yeah, yes. <laughs> oh man, and Bob mm. loves. I, mean, I think that's just the love of his life. Is that showtime? He's just, yeah, um, totally. you know, always. And and so many, so many uh, um, uh, kids have come through, done the showtime, and gone on to mm. to do to do other stuff. You know, it's off that little spark that they, that they need, like the on the go show. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was the Herald on the Go show for a while. I think it was, uh, it was the Herald. Then, then when I was doing it, we linked up with Radio Radio Al Go. It was then called Al Go yes. FM, and and yes. did the two together. Um, I remember having Peter Wise as a compare once. You know Peter? Yes, um, I remember Peter. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And oh, yeah. because Peter Wise is slightly disabled due to thalidomide or whatever, um, yes. there was some conflict about him being the compare. And one of the people on the committee said to Peter, what happens if you drop your notes? He says, I break dance. <laughs> um, and Good on yeah, Peter. That's, yeah, that's, that's the type of guy he was. And he did a great <laughs> job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you know he was great. He was really mm -hmm. great. Also, another guy that that's that's inspired a lot of the DJs that I've had on. I've had a lot of DJs on the show as well, and they've always um, spoken about Peter as well. A lot of them. Mm. But uh, and and uh, let's let's have a look. We've got a couple more surprises. Let's have a, let's go through them. But let's, let's have a look here. What's who's this? Andre from Germany and Anne in <laughs> Johannesburg. We're really thinking of you in the United Kingdom, and so often. Uh, we sit down and we think back on the magnificent days that we had on the Eastern Province Herald under your tutorship and guidance. You played a huge part in my career and you will remain forever good, good friends of ours. We hope you and the family are good and have a magnificent December. I deserve that. <laughs> Lovely to speak to you. Yeah. And I hope that you're all well 
and um, when we come up to your part of the world, hope to see you. <laughs> there we go, Jeremy Maggs. Yeah, now, now Maggs was a junior reporter when, when Langa happened. Oh, wow, and, really? Yeah, okay. and he was out at the scene. Uh, well, he went to it afterwards, yeah. and I, th I think it had a severe impact on him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, a, a good reporter, right. and so was right. Anne, yeah. Well, he's done very well for himself. I know. Yeah. I think he's up in Germany. He even did what? Who wants to be a millionaire? I think. Yes, he did. Yes, yeah. he did. <laughs> Indeed. Oh man. Okay. Let's let's have a look at the next one. Let's. Uh, we, we got a couple. We got a couple left here. Let's have a look. Must say, I was very surprised and somewhat flattered to be asked to take part in this exercise. <laughs> I hope you will. Um, I'm speaking to you from Longabon, where I'm now well and truly retired, having been cooked kicked out of, well, actually, I kicked myself out of the Gupta Enterprise <laughs> about a dozen years ago. Um, told I told to stick his um, job in a place where it's the sun don't shine. Even before we knew just what a bad writer he was, although he's still my Facebook friend. I enjoy seeing your stuff on Facebook from time to time. Um, and I hope you're doing well. Um, Another bit of useless information you might enjoy is that uh, Elon Musk's father also lives here in Longabon. Yeah. A fairly yeah. recent uh, uh, arrival. Yeah. And another person you might be interested to hear is Isabel Koch. Yes. Um, I think she tracked, uh, traced me through Facebook um, and called me one day wanting to discuss the, the Bird Island book uh, the week it was published. Um, she wanted to know if I thought it was all true or not. <laughs> Keep well, Matt. <laughs> he, he, he was Island a newsletter before me, Gareth. Okay, okay. The, whole, yeah. the Bird Island well, stuff a... is all true, yeah. Gee, was, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so, so you guys were doing stuff at, at the time yeah. as well? I remember oh, being right. at the airport and um, with uh, a photographer and... Uh, who was the Minister of Defence? Milan. Milan, yes. Yeah, yes. And somebody else arrived in a helicopter, uh, picked up some uh, younger folk and disappeared, and they were going to Bird Island. Wow. Wow. Mm. So that was actually good. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember who that was that we, we were talking. I think we might have even said someone talking about that as well on the show. Uh, that, that's that, that's a, that's an interesting – it was a book, hey? Eh? Was, was yeah. Book? Uh, I can't remember who it was that, that wrote the book. No, I'm not, uh, uh, I, I can't remember either. I know one of them, one of the people involved in it died. And apparently yes, it yes. was suicide. I don't know. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the Jeffrey Epstein of PE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. so. Uh, yeah, that that was crazy. Uh, there, there was a guy, and I can't remember who it was that I was talking about it. But uh, but interesting. That's very interesting that you that you you can actually back that up. Mm. Um, and uh, okay, let, let's let's have a look at some. We've got we've got uh, we've got two more here. Let's let's have a look quickly. Um, Sam Fenter here. I hope you're well in chilly yeah. London and you're finding some decent wine to drink, preferably South African. Um, yeah, it'd be great to hear what you what you're drinking over there and how your wine club's going. Um, I think you know I remember you from my days when I was on the Herald and you were on the Evening Post. Um, our mutual friend Tanya Cole. Uh, lots of laughs um, and I think we all learnt a lot from you as well um, but I think the the thing that most always stands out for me is is that very dry very quick wit of yours that um, it's almost impossible to match or reply to anyway it's early in the day so I'll cheers you with coffee and great to see you again oh, excellent Sam I love Sam I yeah, she's love fun, Sam. Yeah. Now, now Sam and I were at school together from sub to matric and, oh, okay. uh, and, yeah. and I, I just want to go and hug her there when I see her. She's such a <laughs> sweetie. <laughs> she helped me out with Michael White the other day, who's from Elgin. Yeah, uh, that, that was a good interview. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Yes, yes. She was, she was and, and, and Sam was, was asking the more difficult wine questions. <laughs> I was yes. doing I was doing the kakprat and she was doing the wine questions. <laughs> <laughs> Micah says hi from Monica. Uh, Monica, uh, Ma Monica, Monica is my granddaughter, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. a granddaughter. <laughs> yeah, well, I have one here and I have a few in South Africa, yeah. Well, not a few. Oh, uh, really? Two granddaughters in South Africa. 
Yeah. Most impressive, Andre. Mm -hmm. Now then we will forgive you for the gray hair. That's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay, so we, we I've got we I think we've got one more to go. We've got one more to go. Let's let's have a quick quick squiz. No, hey Andre. Um long time no see guys. Um I'm just flying the flag for EP <laughs> newspapers all around the world apparently. So you're in London, people all over the place. I'm saying cheers to you from Melbourne, Australia. Um, not in Melbourne at the moment, just in on holiday in Halls Gap. We've taken a little break between lockdowns. Officially the longest lockdown city in the world. Something to celebrate? No. <laughs> Maybe we'll catch up for a real beer one day. Talk yeah. to you later. All the best, Andre. Cheers, Gino. <laughs> Ciao, Lance Dodd. Yeah, Lance uh, <laughs> He was fun as well, yeah. Yeah, he was. He's got a solid Australian accent going yeah, on. Yeah, it's there. amazing how quickly they adapt. I should work on my English accent, I think. Yeah, Trouble I think is, there's so. too many South Africans here. Oh, he's, he's got so much that he even missed that. Uh, what's it? All's Gap. It's, uh, it sounds like a terrible place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, he misses those those little uh, subtleties these days, I see. <laughs> yeah, well, not always. But it's, it's amazing how the people who work for those two newspapers have spread around the world. Yes. Um, yeah, amazing. Hey? Quite a few um, to Australia, think... quite a few here, uh, yeah. No, the expats have spread far and wide, but they always mm. like to come back and kind of say, how's it again, and check it out, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I, I do, but I, I still do still believe that there's so much potential here, and especially here, Kabecha PE, uh, Nelson Mandela Bay is just—it's a beautiful place still, you know. Mm. Um, and 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 if we like, like you say, if we just look forward, if we just look forward, we're gonna go. It's yeah. gonna happen. Be yeah. positive, not a blood group, but a, a state of mind. Yes, <laughs> be positive. <laughs> that was a joke, my father. My father, when, just before my father died, he he said to me, we, we didn't know what blood group he was to save his life, and he said, "Be positive, be positive." But we just it was so hard because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. yeah. uh, Barry Avery in Australia and and uh, Another uh, one, yeah. Jerry McCabe in New Zealand as well as Gary saying here as well. Yeah. Yeah, so, so they're all spread all over yeah, the place. They are, yeah, yes. yeah. 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 So Barry Avery is working for a gold company, a gold mining oh, company, really? apparently. Well, yeah. you wouldn't think he'd move out of South Africa for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've, I've no idea, but uh, he seems happy last time I spoke to him, yeah. No, oh, fantastic. Uh, all right, uh, Andre, uh, yeah. a quick, quick couple of uh, is, is, let's say, let's say a, a couple of qu little questions here. I've got getting to know you section here, and uh, and I've got a, a a quick questions, and then we can get into get into the final. Get to know you, get to know all about you. Just a couple of silly ones. Oh, what, what's your what's your your current obsession? Current obsession. Finding a decent South African wine in UK. I'm saying that for Sam's uh, benefit. Um, yes. I don't know. Just to be happy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's uh, that, an obsession. Oh, oh, well, that doesn't sound obsession. My current obsession would be to find fuel for my car. But oh, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, that, that's, yeah, that must be quite difficult. That's quite a hell of, it's a, hell of a thing. Well, what is actually going on there for? I mean, I, I've just been skimming over the news with that. I, I, I don't understand why England hasn't got food and, and, and petrol. <laughs> it sounds like South Africa to me. It's, well, people say it's because of Brexit. It's, there's a shortage of uh, right. truck, truck drivers. So the fuel oh. is in the depot. They can't get it to the forecourt quick enough. And somebody said, oh, there's going to be a fuel shortage, and everyone believed it. So now there is because they went and filled up their cars when they didn't need to. So everyone's um, got full tanks, but nobody's got petrol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that, yeah. All right, what makes you really angry? Uh, in uh, Discretion. Uh, when people uh, discriminate, sorry, discrimination, not discrimination. discrimination. Yeah. Oh, yeah, discrimination. You need discretion to find discrimination. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I think that. And people, oh, what group are, besides bad road drivers and people using yes. e scooters on the are road. Are you a bit of a road rager, are you? Not really. I just have advice for other drivers. <laughs> Uh, you know, there was a British program I saw where people, where they actually had a program about people who were ridiculous road rage people. And, they, like, you know, the one guy had a list of 50 cars. 
Yeah. And he said, these drivers that drove <laughs> these cars are terrible drivers. Vauxhall drivers are the worst, Vauxhall, he yeah. says. Or, or white fans, yeah. Mm. And he went up the list. Eventually, he got to BMW drivers. They are terrible. Like, what? Well, what? yeah. The BMW drivers are universally known for yes. very few can afford the executive model, which has an indicator. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, man. Okay. So what, what do you say the biggest accomplishment in your career so far? Probably being news editor on the Herald and assistant editor on the Post and to keep it going as it was closing. Those two, I would yeah. say. Yeah. No, that's, that's oh, a tough uh, job. Uh, that was it. And, and not getting the job as bass player for the Rolling Stones would be my biggest disappointment. <laughs> yeah. Did Charlie say no? No, Andre, <laughs> we can't have that. <laughs> yes. yeah. Oh, no. Uh, let's see. Have you got any strange superstitions or like, um, like that? No, I don't think so. I'm, I'm probably mildly... Uh, obsessive about things like I like things to be in a certain order. I still have a whole bunch of CDs. But OCD. Yeah, o OCD. OCD. I've got, yeah, it's all about my CDs. Yes, CDs. in alphabetical yes. order. Yeah. Oh my God! So you still keep your CDs and, and do do that as well? You got yeah. your CDs? Well, you haven't uploaded them. Or, well, yeah, I've, I've got know, Spotify, Spotify now, as know. well. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nice to have the original. Yeah. Samantha Kerber saying hello. So, oh, yeah. oh, yes, she's in Plettenberg Bay. Oh, lovely. Oh, nice. I hope the weather's going to be good there because if it is good there, it's going to be good here tomorrow. Alphabetic uh, oh. LPs. Have we got LPs as well? Yep. Well, J Jackie used to help me alphabetize them. Um, and then you'd order like this. Death Hotel go under J or T. Yeah. That is ridiculous. <laughs> that, Andre, that is a pain in the arse. That's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, probably was, yeah. And then you'd get a new one, so you'd have to put exactly. that in the shuffle all the others along. Yeah. <laughs> Gary says the uh, Jethro Tull is under F for flute. <laughs> he says. <laughs> 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 oh, no. yeah. uh, have you got an embarrassing story from your childhood? From my childhood? Yes. Or from any time actually. Um one of my most embarrassing adult things was uh, having yeah. to sing karaoke at the Fish River Sun. Oh. <laughs> and I chose You've Lost That Loving Feeling because I thought it only had one note. Well, it might, might have had, but I was, I was nowhere near it. No. <laughs> and I sang it lovingly to my wife, Lynn. Oh, and, uh, lovely. She wasn't that impressed with my vocal rendition. Okay. Well, hopefully she had enough Nachtmusik by then, too. <laughs> no, and fortunately, there was only an audience of about 20 or 30, so it wasn't that bad. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. All right. I anything in your bucket list that you still want to do? Um, yeah, I'd like to go have a beer with Lance Dodd in Australia. No, uh, That's a good idea. <laughs> we enjoy travel. I'd I haven't been to Australia or New Zealand. Um, okay. Bucket list. No, not really. I'm, I'm happy with most of the things that I've, I'm happy with what I've got at the moment. Like most people, I'd like more. We enjoy traveling. My, our dream is to retire and get a, a camper van or go camping, just work our way through Europe uh, from here whoa. to Greece. Yeah, that'll be That's cool. That's something like the, that you do in your 20s, you know, <laughs> Yeah, well, well, apparently I, I don't make the age limit. Might be a bit shit now. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. But people take, they, they'll take pity on their utopies, so. Yeah, they do. They do. They do. And, yeah. and, you, and it's certainly going to be interesting. That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, Let, yeah. Let's have a look at the. Let's have a look at the either ors. We're going to do some either ors with you. Yeah. All right. The first one: antique or brand new? Antique. <laughs> Touch or taste? Oh, taste. Oh, nice. I'm surprised you're not fatter than you are. <laughs> Alone or in a crowd? Uh, tough one. Crowd. You like a bit of a, like a, bit of a party? Yeah, but you can be alone in a crowd. You see, that's why I said tough one. Oh, I see. Oh, that, that sounds so sad. <laughs> Liz B saying, how's it? Is is that, is your your brother-in-law. I, I didn't know how to say the brother-in-law named Les B. Les B. 
<laughs> well, let's be let's well, be friends. Yeah. Well, let's be let's be really is <laughs> uh, <my> word. <laughs> uh, a red wine or white wine? Red. Red, excellent. Uh, makeup or no makeup? <laughs> Me okay, personally. This was... <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I prefer to go without, although a bit of eyeshadow does help. Um, no, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a makeup fan. Okay, I've, I've been stealing questions from my last female guest here, so I'm just checking. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, okay, cats or dogs? Dogs. Dogs. I like the dogs, eh? Save mm -hmm. or spend? Uh, you have Come to save to spend, so I spend. You spend. I was going to say you have yeah. to spend. Somebody that 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 stops his job at the weekend post, so then buggers off overseas. It's, uh, in that time frame, it's got to be a spender. It's a risk taker. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess <laughs> you so. take, and you. It's it's it was a it's a brave move. It's true. It's true. It's, it's, it says was, something yeah. about yeah. yourself. Forest or beach? Beach. Beach, excellent. I love that. Okay, so let's uh, we we on to the would you rather's. Let's have a look. All right, would you be, would you rather be wealthy doing something you hate or be poor doing something you love for the rest of your life? Uh, the last one, doing something I love. Poor and doing something you love. Yeah. Well, because I'm I'm doing that at the moment. <laughs> Can't even afford petrol or food. <laughs> no, there you go. Yeah. I love it. But would you would you rather be wise and unhappy or stupid and happy? <laughs> uh, I guess wise. Because if you're All stupid, right. you don't know what you're missing. Yeah. But you're gonna be sad. Yeah. And Lynn's not gonna put up with you. And there's Melancholy. divorce coming already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting for an objection to that. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Would you rather live a miserable life or not be born at all? <laughs> this is a Gary question. This one. That's, that's got to be a Gary question. That's that, that, that's is. Schrodinger's cat. Um, it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, you wouldn't know if you hadn't been born. So I guess that's if you live a miserable life, it's up to you to make it better. Sorry, I was leaning down to pat my dog. Oh, that's all right. Oh, is that what you call it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll show you. I can show it to you. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. This is a family show. <laughs> um, would you rather save your mom from a burning building or 10 babies? Hmm. Well, <laughs> my mother has since died, but she, she wasn't, okay. wasn't in a burning building. Oh, Actually, she wasn't. Uh, were there 10 babies in the building? Did you, did you save I them? Don't know. Was it a maternity ward? Yeah. <laughs> it must have been. <laughs> it must have I, been. I, guess, I guess I'd save the babies. All oh, right, yeah, because your mom wouldn't mind. She would. That's yeah. what she would choose. I guess, yeah. <laughs> Sam's saying those are so Gary questions. You're absolutely <laughs> yeah. right, Sam. Okay, yeah. one last one. Would, the, would you rather? Would you rather save your pet or a random stranger out of a river? I guess it'll be my pet. <laughs> That's strange. He could give you money. He could give you, it could be. It could, he could be so thankful to you. That random um, stranger could, could have been Elon Musk's dad living down in he, wherever, Longabon. In Longabon. <laughs> <laughs> Your dog's coming out first. <laughs> Classic. If you take the dog out, it lowers the level of the water. <laughs> Yeah, right, all right. So he can swim. Yeah, <laughs> that's a very that's a long shot. <laughs> that's a long shot, Andre. We we got one more question that we always ask everybody. That is, and that is your one your proudest moment, and uh, and, and 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 other than than marrying your spouse or the birth birth of your children, you know, you've got to think about mm -hmm. career stuff. Proudest moment, and then and then something where something's gone completely wrong. Hmm. So start with your proudest moment. What do you think? Not not counting marriage and family and stuff like that. So in no, the career, no, no, that's um, that's boring. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this is going to sound weird, but um, when I worked for Ford Motor Company, I was taking yes. people around a, a, a rally stage, you know, special stage yes. rallies, and yes. I was in a Granada Gear Automatic. Oh, I know the one. Uh, Yes, yeah. that square box. I went through a special way. stage to drop a photographer at the end, and yeah. and we were like two minutes ahead of the first rally car, 
And the guy clocked me when I finished and I ended up having the third fastest time for that stage. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. But that was really, yeah. was he was he navigating for you? Because like, that freaks me out. There's guys yeah. in those rally cars, eh? Yeah. He just sits there, looks at a piece of paper and says you turn left yeah. in two hundred yards. Yeah. Yeah, and then he just feels where you go, and then it's, and you're jumping over freaking at at 190 k's an hour on a gravel road. I mean, yeah, it's just it's, absolutely insane. That is weird. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Weird. Off the road, I, I, yeah. I still don't know how they do it. There's some some sort of shorthand that they use as well. It's like 22 left and 22 right. And 450 right. Yeah, there has to be. Yeah, and you're bouncing along trying to read that at the same time. I know. I know. It's crazy. I love rally. I love it. I love it. Okay, so that's your proudest moment, and then, and then what about your, uh, your something where something's gone completely wrong? Okay, uh, this I just remembered now. Being at some function in the Feather Market Hall, it could have been like Citizen of the Year or the Industry Awards or something yes. like that, and I was the master of ceremonies. And oh. a very good friend of mine, Matt Genrich, walked in with his wife, Tony, and she was wearing this lovely red dress, and she said to me, I said, that, that dress looks really good on you. She said, it's so tight, I couldn't wear underwear. Anyway, um, I'm then up on stage and people are moving about and I see someone with a red dress and I said, that looks good considering you haven't got underwear and it wasn't Tony. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> you weet die andere hier, Rasmus, is jy bieke vatterig. Vatterig, please, I haven't heard that in words, yeah. Oh, thank you, Andre yeah. Rasmus. Thank you so much for oh, coming on board. Thank you. It's it's been fantastic and it's lovely to see you again and, and have a chat. Uh, yep. You know, we've missed you, man. We've missed you and we hope that in December, if you're coming out, you're going to come and say hello. I will do that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. okay. All right, Andre. Well. And, and now what we've got is uh, is our competition. We have a competition now that we, we give away the Fitchin Leads. Indeed, for those of you who are left online, you can win Fitchin Leads uh, and we'll send it to you wherever you are. Uh, what you've got to do is you've got to, uh, you've got, we're going to go with the drum cam and you have to put in the name of the song and the name of the artist in the, com the, in, in the comments. The first one to comment with the name of the song and the name of the artist, you are going to be the winner. So uh, let's go for it. Let's do it. overseas <laughs> but we'll check if you can gift it to somebody thank you Bronwyn you were the winner tonight and thank you to Andre Erasmus Andre you've been an absolute legend it's wonderful to catch up again and we will see you ladies and gentlemen on Tuesday when we have Angelo from Spa is coming in he's, he heads up Spa here in the Eastern Cape we're going to chat to him about his history and what's going on alright 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 Thank you to Fitch and Lees. Thank you to Spa. And thank you to Amobia for our internet. Woo! Thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> Relax it down. Coming out of PE town. Don't drink, find a shot. Never mind your liver. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle. And exercise your middle. Have a Gino shot. Have a laugh, have a giggle, and 